<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the other side of the coin and welcome back to another edition of the latest in Chelsea news. Finally, finally, ladies and gentlemen, it seems like some of the better players uh, in the in the club, in the likes of Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer is the one that's been shining out massively this season. He's come out firing, ladies and gentlemen, post that debacle against, um, I don't even remember anymore, to be honest, Burnley. There you go, Burnley. I want to forget that. Honestly, I really want to forget that match. But Cole Palmer has come out gunshots firing and this is what he had to say so we're going to go through what he had to say there's some news about reese james as well and some news about andre santos and strasburg so do stick around smash the like button right now there's some important news coming up if you're here for the first time subscribe as well now let's start from what were the quotes said by cole palmer post-match very important to understand what his feeling is all about he's 100 frustrated but let's see what he has to say that simply can't happen to go in front against 10 men and then lose the lead at home. It's just not good enough. The dressing room is really down because we know we should go on and win this game when they go down to 10 men, especially at home. He further goes on to say, it is a similar story if we are being honest. We have to take responsibility and improve on this as players. We fashioned many chances but couldn't um, couldn't put them away at the end and at the end uh, at the other end. There were times where we were sloppy in our defensive work. 100% we were sloppy. And last but not least, he goes on to say, Palmer on scoring two goals. If you don't get the three points, it doesn't mean much. Ladies and gentlemen, you can clearly sense the frustration from this player. Clearly. And you know what? This is the first warning sign from Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer, all this time, he's been quite calm, you know, going about his work nonchalantly, doing extremely well. He'll definitely go down as Chelsea's player of the year. There is absolutely no doubts about that. There, no one comes near his, um, you know, performances so far this season. He'll probably go down as maybe one of the contenders of young player, uh, player of the year in the Premier League. Uh, I don't know whether he might be in contention for player of the year as well because Chelsea, as a football club, we, we've been rubbish. So I think that might be a bit of a downer for him. And, and do you know what? He may tolerate this season because it's his first season. Next season, with the points deduction looming, we're already, this season, we're not, we didn't have any Europe. We're not going to have any Europe next season. I highly doubt we're going to have Europe unless we do some mad stuff in the FA Cup. I don't think we're going to get, you know, Conference League or even Europa League through, through the league. Um, so next season looks like another off season with with europe but if next season we have another tumultuous season like this season and we don't end up getting europe again the season after believe me cole palmer will put his hand up and say look i don't want to keep wasting my time at chelsea football club this guy has standards this guy's come from manchester city where he's won the treble there all he ever saw was success 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 and now he's come to a club where you know it's it's diabolical there's no structure. There's no system. The manager just seems very clueless at times. Coward as well. Directors, sporting directors, filling up the team with just young players after young players after young players. Owners. We don't even know what the project is all about. Yet everyone keeps saying, yeah, it's a good project. Chelsea project. Very good project. Cole Palmer, you best believe. This crap show continues. He'll be the first one putting his hand up to say, I'm out of here. I need to leave. And for all the people that want to, you know, down, you know, talk down on, on Cole Palmer, oh, well, who was Cole Palmer when he was, uh, before he came to Chelsea now? Believe me, Manchester City fans and Manchester City themselves, they knew what type of player Cole Palmer was. The issue was in Manchester City, Cole Palmer's a bench player. You see the levels. In Manchester City, Cole Palmer's a bench player. And back in our days, our legendary days, when we had Frank Lampard, Didier Drogba, John Terry, Ashley Cole, Peter Cech, Essien, Michael Ballack, and those kind of players in the team, yeah, Cole Palmer would probably be in the bench as well in that era. Right now, Cole Palmer, at the age of 21, I believe, he's having to lead this team. This is too much for a 21-year-old, honestly. He shouldn't have to lead this team. Without his goals and assists this season, I think we're dead. So Cole Palmer, for the first time publicly showcasing, he's getting fed up. 
too many times. He's even mentioned it. This is happening too many times. Being in lead at halftime, coming out second half, capitulation. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts. I, I'm, and do you know what? Our owners, our owners are going to be pretty, you know, stoked as well when they get that bid for hundred plus million for Cole Palmer down the track. They'll be like, yeah, profit, baby, profit, because that's all they think about. It's not about winning for them. It's about having that Brighton model, that Leipzig model, punching above your weight, finding those gems, making money. That's what it's all about. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts. If we continue this way, I think it will be lights out for Cole Palmer. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, check this out. Chelsea are planning to sell Reese James this summer, coming from Duncan Castles. Um, this is a source I don't really pay too much attention, but this news, why I brought this up is a lot of people started getting so upset when they saw this news post-match yesterday that Chelsea Football Club might be keen to get Reese James out. Now, look, I don't believe in the story, but at the same time, let me tell you something. A couple of things, two things I want to say. One, to the fan base, why are you getting so, so much in uproar? Like, for what? Rich James, a player that barely plays for us. Honestly, he barely plays for us. What are we getting upset about? What, what, what is this sentimental value? There are far bigger issues in this football club, you know. Three points is what we need to be worried about. We shouldn't be worried about a player that is predominantly injured and we're getting worried, though, oh, what happens if he gets sold? If anything, I think it would probably be a smart business to get rid of him now. If Real Madrid, for instance, come, and, come knocking on the door and, and they want to pay, I don't know, 18, 19 million for Reese James, let's just say for argument's sake, I don't think we can fetch that much, but let's just say that's the case. I think that actually would be a smart business because I don't know what type of Reese James I'm going to get back post this injury, the, the operation that he's had. There's no guarantee. You can't sit there, hand on your heart, and actually say, nah, Miz, no way, Reese James, he's going to play 90% of the season from here on in. You just don't know. It's a huge question mark. So that's number one. What are you getting upset about? Just because he's an academy player. And number two, believe me, our owners, as much as they say, oh, you know, because off the back of this, straight away, Ben Jacobs, Ben Jacobs might have got the phone call. Ben Jacobs might have got the phone call from, from the Chelsea owners or the Chelsea board, got a quick briefing because he saw the uproar. And this is all a diversion, really. It's all a diversion. Because there was an off result, a result that went against us, they created this news so that they can take the attention, di divert us away from the main situation. Ben Jacobs came with the news. Reese James remains committed to Chelsea and even an offer of 100 million plus would likely be instantly rejected by Chelsea FC coming from Ben Jacobs. Nah. And that's number two. It will not be rejected. 100% it will not be rejected. Our owners show far, so far, the, the, the one thing that we get the vibe, the understanding of the project is that they will sell players for high amount of money. Because that's the model. Selling club model. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Are you... Are you upset seeing this news? What's your feeling? For me, I, I couldn't care less at the moment. Rhys James not going to feature this season. Rhys James barely featured last season. He barely featured the season before that. He's never. He's barely featured since he joined Chelsea Football Club under Frank Lampard. Injuries have killed him. And now I'm, I'm meant to sit here and be upset. Oh, if the owners... Apparently, there are you know, fans out there saying, oh, we will riot. We will riot. These fans, they will riot if we sell Gallagher. They will riot if we sell Rhys James. Riot for the right reason, mate. Riot for the reason that we're not getting three points. Riot for the reason that this manager is not good enough, the one that we have right now. Riot for the reason that the sporting directors are not good enough for this football club. Riot for the reason that the owners... And their project is diabolical. You're going to ride because they want to sell Gallagher. He probably needs to be sold. You're going to ride because potentially they're looking to sell Reese James, even though I don't believe in the news. But let's just say, for argument's sake, it's true. It's probably a good business, you know, because there's a huge question mark. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Now, last but not least, 
check this out. Strasbourg Ultras are marching against Bluco. Um, they did a protest today before their match. They actually ended up winning. I watched that match, actually. Strasbourg versus Wren. I, I was simultaneously watching that, and I was also watching um, Arsenal versus Manchester City. Look, Strasbourg fans, big up to you, man. Big up to you for doing this level of protest. Big up. We should be following suit. As a matter of fact, there's probably been worse things happening to us than Strasbourg. But you don't see us do this. This is what we need to do. Our, our situation right now demands this kind of a response. But we're still we're still just happy to be just there, happy to go to Stamford Bridge. And apparently there are fans now that are just accepting the results as well now. There needs to be an uproar. How there wasn't an uproar yesterday off the back of that draw against Burnley. Just deep it for a second, ladies and gentlemen. Ten-man Burnley at Stamford Bridge. Managerless Burnley. 19th placed Burnley. Came back twice, not once, but twice against Chelsea. And no uproar. No uproar. Crazy, crazy. Now, in regards to Andre Santos, I was watching Andre Santos. That was the main um, you know, reason that I was watching Strasbourg. Andre Santos actually had another very, very good game, you know. Very combative in midfield. Excellent on the ball when building up from the back. Look, predominantly Wren had the ball. Wren were technically a lot better. Their players were a lot better. But Strasbourg ended up getting the results 2-0. Right? Strasbourg stayed resolute, stayed compact. And when they got the opportunity to attack and counter, they did it in good pace and they got those goals. But Andre Santos, his awareness defensively, very good. Moving forward, finding those passes. Very, very good good performance in midfield. And this is what Patrick Vieira had to say. Andre Santos is calm when he has the ball at all uh, at his feet. He has the technical quality to build from the back as well. With Habib, they had a very good match in midfield. Yeah, that, that, his partner, Habib, also complimented him very nicely. So big up to Andre Santos. This is his stats. Andre Santos today, one chance created, nine duels won, five tackles completed, four fouls won. Excellent match, uh, in my opinion, from Andre Santos's point of view. And that's back-to-back -back victories for Strasbourg, which helps them out massively to, to avoid relegation. And as I've said, I fully think Andre Santos should be part of Chelsea's first team next season. Now, whether he starts from the get-go, I don't know, but he should be in the squad. Someone we can utilize off the bench, no doubts about that. He's a quality midfielder. That's the kind of level of youngsters that we need to have in our team. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, everyone. Take care. See ya.